All right, welcome to another edition of the Above the Bridge podcast. This is episode 19. I'm your host, Thaddeus. Shout out to my producer, Boy Band John. What's up, John? All right. Shout out to our sponsors, Defend Hawaii and also Detail Garage Hawaii. Right now, if you go onto their website and their our promo code is ATB Pod upon checkout, 15% off anything you order. So that would be defendhawaii.com, ATB Pod. DetailGarageHawaii.com, ATB Pod. Again, 15% off all your order if you um, use our promo code upon checkout. All right. Today's guest, I'm super happy to have him on. He's been someone I looked up to for a long time, and his son is um, my brother, best friend. Um, you know him from Tiny TV, Ohana Marketplace, um, also the news. My guest today is Tiny Tadani. What's up, Tiny? Hey, how's it going, What's Tiny? Up? <laughs> Hi. Oh, I'm super happy that you came on. You um, legitimized my show. <laughs> well, I, think I, was, I was looking at some of your previous guests, including my son, who was your first show. I think I may be the oldest one, so I'm honored. Because it's kind <laughs> of a new generation thing with this podcast, you know? Yeah, it's cool. I mean... um, I don't know if you remember, but the first time I met you, I was young and we came to the news uh, channel in the morning and we did a Taekwondo demonstration and you were hosting the morning show at that time. So that's when I first met you. You probably don't remember, but it was for me, it was a huge deal. It was the first time I was on TV. I got to meet Tiny Tadani and... Um, yeah, it was huge for me. I don't know if you remember that segment, but we came in and I got tossed around by a bunch of girls and kicked in the face. And yeah, it was a fun time. <laughs> All these years later, and with your daughter and your wife, you're still getting kicked in the face. and, and beat yeah. Up by the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's no fun. <laughs> was that with, uh, what's his name, Smith? Was yeah, yep. Yeah. Was it with Smith? Yep. And then you host one of our Taekwondo banquets at the time, too. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that was my first experience with uh, Tiny. Um, but the way we connected back in the day was I used to run the Aino Kes store and we said on my podcast with Taylor, you came in and, and brought him on for your Tiny TV. So how did Tiny TV get started? Because there, I don't think anybody in Oahu or Hawaii has not seen an episode of Tiny TV. And I know how big it was because when our little episode ran on Tiny TV, the amount of traffic and, and people that talked about it was huge. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was different back then because when the show started over 20 years ago, there weren't too many Tiny TVs. So a lot of people watched it. It was me. I brought on local kind grinds at the same time. Brought a yeah, Lina. that's right. And it was it. And they would repeat our shows over and over again on OC16. And uh, everyone who saw the show would go to the sponsors or go to the restaurants. And they kind of knew Tiny TV. People would see me on the street and be like, go Tiny, go, go Tiny. <laughs> it was like a phenom. And it was fun to do. I, I like to, like you said, the, the word pioneer, I keep in my back pocket all the time. And it's kind of what I go to all the time. And I think, what do I want to do? I like to be first, not just to be first, but I just want to be original. You're always more successful when you do that. And then once everyone starts to copy and it, it happens uh, over and over again, then I kind of move on. Then yeah. I know it's <laughs> something new, you know? Well, and speaking just, of... Pi oh, go ahead. No, no it, it's that uh, term that they use when they say you reinvent yourself. Yes. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm your oldest guest. I'm 57, so I've reinvented myself several times. And... <laughs> I'm kind of proud of that, that I can keep doing it because I'm kind of in the midst, and we'll talk about it later, of reinventing myself again. Well, uh, that's but, uh, awesome. And yeah, back speaking, to speaking TV, of... Though, I, I just wanted to mention real quick because uh, it, it, people always ask how I started it, and it, it's real simple. Uh, camera, shooting stuff by myself, doing the audio by myself, being the host, and uh, editing... With one person, I've always had an editor. I'm, I'm not really good at that, but my son is, is my key one. But it's uh, basically you get paid more when you do it by yourself. That's so true. Like, and, you can, and you have creative, contr creative control of what your, what your content is. And be, speaking of Pioneer, 
right now, if you had makeup and and audio and oh and yeah, food, you, you couldn't really make money with your sponsors. Like right now, you can take care of you and John, and you're good, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> As speaking of pioneers, as as popular as it is today, the selfie, I think you're the first person to have invented the selfie because I have seen you do it. Taylor has talked to me about it. There, <laughs> you, there's only one person in back in the day who filmed their own stuff holding their Sony camera, and it was a tape camera, right? Right. And oh, you selfied your whole about- show. It was bigger than a phone back then, so it was a little more yeah. technique to not shake it and, and hold a big camera, you know? Yeah, so it's like, I don't care what anybody says. Tiny Tadani is the inventor of the selfie because he's doing it back in the day. One hand filming a whole TV show with it. So I got to give you props on that. <laughs> People used to tease me all the time and say, can't you hire a cameraman? But then I go back <laughs> to what I said earlier is, hey, if I can pay myself instead of paying another person, and besides, and, and you know this too, and you shoot something yourself, you know what you want. You know, zoom here, pan here, uh, that interview, you want a close up. If you have to explain it to somebody, I mean, think about it. It'll take twice as long. You got to tell them what you want. And then if it's not exactly what you had in your mind, you got to do it again. And it's three times as long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Reshoot it or whatnot. But yeah, as popular as it is today with all these girls and their TikTok videos. Um, it all started with you, man. <laughs> I wish I could somehow claim a selfie as mine and I could get paid royalties for everyone who does a selfie. Oh, that would be a billion dollar industry. Easy. <laughs> One of those ghost shows, my, my wife likes to watch those shows about ghosts and they're on like those history channels or whatever. And uh, there's these young guys out there looking for spirits. And they're at the end, they're, they're filming themselves talking. And I don't know if you've seen that. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is national now. And, and then even you got CNN and other news stations who buy cameras, they set it up on the tripod and they have reporters doing it now without a cameraman. It's kind of oh. the way it's going. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting to be that that um, that way. I mean, we're doing it. I'm in front of a computer right now and like nobody set it up but me. <laughs> John <laughs> tells me how to angle it though. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. <laughs> Good to have uh, someone like that you know, watching over. And my son was the same way. He would edit my show and he'd go, oh, dad, you're saying uh, like so a lot. You know, I would do so or whatever was my transition. He would tell me, you know, and being the young boy, he had a hard time in the beginning trying to tell me what I had to fix, you know? Oh, yeah. He's the same way with me because I would say um a lot. And then he would call me, hey, bro, you got to you gotta stop saying um so much. <laughs> You're always now looking I'm, out. I'm telling him, Taylor, you say frick too much. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's your nightclub lingo, but in public, we got to cool down. You know, it's just yeah. uh, how it goes. But I've been through that. I was young and, you know, you go through that stage. And like, if you can take criticism and move on and take it as a positive way to take critique, then it's good. That's what I, I've been um, learning and that's to humble myself and listen to what people say. Like my my normal reaction is like, what? Ah, you don't know. Like, but I've learned with age to kind of listen to what people say because you could pick up something important and, and it could change things for you. And like like honestly, with John, we got into it. Like, I didn't really want to do video for the podcast, and he was adamant about it. And right now, like the videos portion of it has been blowing up and I had to humble myself and listen to his direction and and he kind of set me right and it was working out. (laughs) I don't know if you you would notice but if you only did audio it would be harder because as for me I did radio in the beginning and then I transitioned to tv everybody thought it would be harder because I got more things happening but in a way I don't have to paint that picture and say when I did radio, if I was doing a, a broadcast at a beach, I'd have to say, we're at the beach and it's sunny yeah. and we got like five people behind me. If I got the camera going, it shows all that. Yeah, you know, that's true. <laughs> so with Tiny TV, is it still running? You said for 20 years? Twenty, About 21 years. I just like to say 20. Uh, it started in, in 2000. So I know I hit 20 in 2020. I'm like that. I like when it's easy numbers, I can remember. <laughs> uh, so anything beyond that was just gravy. Once I hit 2020 and I knew hit, I hit 20 years, I was like, I'm good. 
And when that happened, you know, I, I was going to go on as long as I could, but things change. And my style of shooting as abrupt and kind of uh, on the fly, as you call it, movement, there, there was only one that could be on Spectrum OC16 because you don't want to have too many shows of just, you know, someone walking around with a camera. It gets kind of redundant. Yeah. Yeah. And it is hard to watch sometimes. I had to learn how to kind of steady my camera a little bit. But uh, the, the new company, uh, you know, we were Oceana Cable. We went to uh, Time Warner. Uh, I can't remember all the owners. Spectrum is the latest. But the more it goes into the mainland hands and corporate, oh. uh, they'll demand that, hey, that guy, Tiny, they don't know who I am on the mainland. That yeah. Tiny guy needs to get a, a camera person and uh, the audio needs to be louder or because I have my little tricks I use, but you can only go so far without it being, you know, like a, a top notch production. And well, that, I decided, was a, that was a specialty of your show. It was organic and it was, it was you doing your thing. But I think it, it now lends its way more into social media and going into the Facebooks and the Instagrams because it'll be accepted easier. You got to do stuff quick and fast and people don't care if I'm only using the mic on my phone as opposed yeah. to if I have a lavalier on or a boom mic. Uh, you know, again, it, just time changes, evolves. And back then it was, it was cool. And I remember being at a, a Vegas show and I had a, just my camera. And I shot that King of Queens actress. I don't know if you watched that show with. Oh Kevin yeah, Green. yeah, yeah. The the wife was there at a, a show in Vegas, and I remember walking there and I interviewed her, and I was the only one that got the interview because I was ready. The other guys had to put their headphones in and get the mic ready and oh. <laughs> white balance, and I was like, "Let's go!" And then uh, I was the only one that got my interview with the guy that says let's get ready to rumble. You know, oh, Mike Buffer. Yeah, everyone else yeah. is taking too long and he was walking. When, you're, when they're walking at these conventions, they're not going to stop. But if you walk with them and you're already filming, you got them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's benefits of being quick and being by yourself. Uh, but then there today, I think more so with what happened with my show, it just wasn't enough quality for, for Spectrum. So being that that's not on TV anymore, you kind of took it, like you said, to more social media and, and the social network platform, which is huge. And, and people want their content quick on social media and, and you can deliver pretty quickly on, on that. And I'm so that's what you're doing now? There's some new rules you got to have with, uh, you know, unwritten rules like uh, short and sweet. People don't have an hour or a half an hour. I tried doing a half hour show and it just wasn't working. Uh, even five minutes I know is too long, but still my sponsors or restaurants, they want that. So I give it to them. Yeah. Um, but in reality, people have 30 seconds to see something, you know, and if you can deliver it that quick, that's even better. Um, yeah. I know uh, video helps, but then sometimes if you overproduce for Instagram, people tune out because it looks too fake like sponsored yeah. they don't want it to be sponsored stuff right they want yeah. it to be organic and and kind of natural on the fly kind of what you've been doing all these years already yeah so it was an easy transition for me so i'm doing it the other good thing is i don't have to give them a a show on instagram that that's 28 minutes and 30 seconds long you know oh. or even on youtube i do a seven minute segment and it's done so long and yep. it's nice and happy with it good to go five minutes 30 seconds, there's no limit. And I don't have to worry about, you know, Taylor used to have to um, put a little tone at a certain point in the show so the commercials could pick up the feed on the computers on the mainland and uh, oh. all these, you know, things. You need those pukas for them to air their national commercials. And um, it's just different. So I'm happy. I'm, I'm 57. I did my 20 years of tiny TV. I like it now where I can spend time with my family. And we just planned a trip to Disney World coming in May. Oh, nice. Be able to do if I have to have a show out every week. That's yeah. true. So with the internet, how's that um, being reciprocated by your fans and, and the general public? They've been kind of following you through this internet journey? I think for me, I, I know there's people that have 200,000 followers or you know 20,000 followers. And uh, for me, I, 
I'm low key. I've got like about almost 5,000 followers. And for me, I like that because they're people I know, they're people I talk to. When I do a restaurant, they text, oh, we're going to go down there. Uh, you know, I don't have somebody in in Italy or in, in yeah. Taiwan that just became my friend. I didn't pay for any of them. You know, that organic word of I, I gained these on my own. Uh, and, and they'll come and follow me. And, and my sponsors are people that I videotape and promote. They're happy because they get good response. Yes. And um, being that you're always showcasing these local businesses and, and it's helpful to them. I mean, I've seen it myself. I don't care. They must be super appreciative because you taking their business and giving them a platform where people that would not know about them, they kind of get showcased. And that's what Tiny TV was about. It was you showing aloha to these businesses and um, giving them some kind of platform. So I always thought that that was cool because a lot of these businesses, they can't run commercial ads. They can't, they don't got the money for like big radio spots and stuff. And they see you on Tiny TV and now it's transforming to Facebook and Instagram still the same kind of eyeballs getting getting to um showcase all these businesses and it, it shows because the aloha you always show i mean it's it's just super friendly and i'm i'm sure your sponsors are appreciative well you know for the the beginnings of tiny tv when i started uh, i i actually had a good number of of advertising dollars coming in it was i was the only one and uh, from the Tony group. It was, uh, I think I was the first show maybe in, I don't know, in the world that had a title sponsorship for a TV show. I called it Tony groups, tiny TV. Oh, that's right. People used to tease me. Yeah. Like, Oh, everything's a sponsor. His whole show is a commercial. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I had uh, the first time it aired on oceanic cable. Um, the, and you know, back to how it started. I worked at KI TV. I did weather and uh, before that sports, I was kind of over the news, just the pressure. And for me, when I moved to weather, getting up at four or five o'clock in the morning, and it was just kind of getting old. So my boss at the time at Spectrum, because I always did promotions there. I never left Oceanic. Uh, my boss, Mitzi Lejano at the time said, I was on the midweek cover with my son. And uh, they put KITV Funny Man. And I worked full time at Oceanic. She said, how come they said KITV? I pay you more. You do more hours here. This is the <laughs> way And I said, it's just the, the way it goes, right? Midweek saw that as the, the bigger company, as opposed to saying, oh, he does football um, sidelines and does promotion. Oh, that's there. right. I forgot about that. <laughs> but, uh, when you say KITV weatherman, it's more prominent. So they put that as a headline on the front page. She said, how can I fix that? How can I make it where your, your oceanics tiny, not KITV? I said, I'll quit doing the weather. She goes, what do you want? More money? And I was making six figures. At the time, that was a lot. And I said, no, I don't want more money. I want an hour on Channel 16 from 9 to 10 o'clock, right before the news. <laughs> and she went, that's it? You don't want money? I said, no, no, that's all. And my, my thing was just tiny TV, walking around with a camera. And I knew it would work because I shot a segment for KITV called Tiny Takes the Bus. It was with a VHS camera. Back then, those little VHS, you would load. The oh, thing. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and people got a kick out of that. So when I approached her with that, she said, go for it. When I left KITV, our cameraman on the morning show said, uh, Ikaika Kimura. I don't know if you know Ikaika, but a good producer here. He became a, a pretty good prominent producer with his own shows. But he said, hey, Tiny, I heard you're leaving. He goes, I like go with you. And I said, what? <laughs> and he's the cameraman for me in the morning. He said, I got an idea for a, a show of this big guy named Brother Sam eating at restaurants called oh. Local Cooking Grinds. And I said, uh, uh, we can meet about it. Let's go to your house and talk one day. So we went. I didn't want to talk at KITV. We went to his house. I walk in his living room and he has a whole setup. Avid was a company there for editing. John would know that one. And and it was it was in his whole living room. His dad bought him the set. And and Ikaika was just out of high school, out of Kamehameha. Brilliant guy on, on editing. And that's my first editor. I said, I tell you what, Ikaika, I got an hour every day on OC16. I'll give you half an hour of my show. Nine to nine thirty will be Tiny TV. Nine thirty <laughs> to ten, 
we'll do local kind grinds. He goes, oh, <laughs> shoot. He goes, how much I got to pay you? I said, nothing. You edit my show for free. <laughs> and you know that that's your most expensive part of your broadcast. The show is going to be your editor. And, yep. and so now I'm bartering everything. And I learned how to barter everything from Mitzi at Spectrum or Oceanic. And so I, it's not that I don't pay for anything. You know, I give airtime for, you know, whether it's gas or my cell phone or whatever. And, and so I was known for being the barter guy with trade, 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 trade. And that helped me save money. So I didn't have to charge people when I, when I did restaurants, I could tell them, you don't have to pay me, just feed my family. Yep. You know, and, <laughs> and they were grateful for that because the, the, the broadcast stations would come in and charge them like three to $5,000 for running a 30 second commercial for production and then airing it. And then they would come to me and then I would charge them maybe a hundred bucks or maybe a thousand dollars if they're a regular sponsor. And they would say, how can you do it? And I, because I save money. Yeah. That was cool because the like restaurants and the people that were on your show, we got to meet them. We got to know them. We got to hear them talk. We got to see where they came from. It wasn't like a big commercial spot. Like you said, that was produced and edited. It, it became like you connected with the, the people who owned it. And for me, that was cool. And I, I trip out like hearing that story. I see so much of Taylor and his mindset came from you. And it's amazing. He's always looking to help people and he always trades and he does things for other people to get them to the next level. And I mean, guarantee that comes from you and, and it's cool to see. And just hearing that story, definitely, I definitely put, put it in relation. It's crazy. <laughs> it always comes back, you know, later on, I'll meet someone later and they'll be like, Oh, you know, uh, you did this for me. And they, they bring me something. Gots grinds and Kanye, the Musubi shop. Oh yeah. I've never charged them and I put them on my show. I put them on my social media. Taylor's put them on. And you know what? To this day, whenever they have extra musubis, and I'm talking like the whole big tray, they bring it to me at Ohana Holly Marketplace and they just give it to me. And and then I, I'm like, I want to give them something too. And they're like, no, no, no. You know, and it's like, <laughs> I like that feeling of when people give and then, you know, they don't expect anything in return or I give and I don't expect anything in return. And I just... Kind of feel good that if I ever was homeless, I'd be okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what aloha is, right? I mean, that was your thing. Aloha, what was it? Random acts of aloha. Right. That was your thing, right? That was something yeah, I was got... This was a good idea. Um, unfortunately, you know, as good as that is, I mean, I could start that up again, but people seem to gravitate to bad news more. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Clickbait. Yep. Yeah. And, People uh, want to see the car wrecks. <laughs> yeah. Or even when I used to tease uh, the governor and do my impersonations and, and all that, <laughs> I kind of kicked back from that a little bit because, uh, you know, I met him and his wife at, at a, a thing I was emceeing once and they seemed like nice people. And so I, I, and I did my impersonation for him. He laughed. He got a kick out of it. I did see that. <laughs> So I <laughs> that's I'll do it. nuts I'll do it once in a while but i don't need to blast it on on social media anymore uh you know he gets enough digs as is already right but <laughs> that's so cool. funny because <laughs> taylor used to tell me my dad taught me how to speak like kermit the frog he said my dad literally taught me how to speak like kermit the frog and everybody says the governor speaks like kermit the frog so uh, when you're doing it, I'm like, Taylor, you can do it too, man. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you you know how you said you used to say I'm um, a lot? Yeah. So you can do it too. Just go back to that and you'll be Governor Ige. Um, um, Yeah, that's true. He got that um down, especially during these COVID um press conferences. <laughs> it would be a drinking game. Every time every time he says um, you'd take a shot and you'd be messed up by the fit sentence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So not, so speaking of Ohana Marketplace, um oh, I said um again. <laughs> speaking <laughs> of Ohana Marketplace, I've been in there and it totally blew my mind. I had no idea what to expect. It reminded me of 
Caroline's Craft Fair at Blaisdell on Christmas. A bunch of vendors that are permanently there that have something to offer the public all the time. It was super cool. So how did that thing start and how did you get involved with that? So Chris Ulu, who was a sponsor of mine through Hawaii Self Storage, and then he went on to own his own self storage company now called uh, Storekeeper, right under Hawaiian Brian's. You'll know the spot. Yeah. And he went to Vegas and saw a indoor swap meet. So he called me and said, hey, Tiny, I know you come to Vegas all the time. You got to check this out. And so I did. And I said, yeah, that was a good idea. But I didn't like it because it was kind of trashy looking. You know, there were like blue tarps and bricks and it just looked like the swap meet down at Cam Shop, Cam uh, Movie Theater uh, with the drive-in before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it was kind of just cheap looking. And, but otherwise, it was a good idea. So I said, if we could do it indoors, it'd be nicer. And he, he agreed. So we actually met like six, seven years ago and shook on it about doing this together. Since then, a lot of things happened. And, and, and so he went on to do it. And I came on and decided to help him. And, and in other ways, marketing and, and running some of the booths and stuff. But uh, he took it all the way and built it nice inside of the old sports authority on Ward Avenue. I have to say, and I think you do too, it, it's nice. It, it's like a, it a mall. It's amazing. Yeah. It's the intrigue of it. It's just like you go in there and there's food from around the world. There's different nationalities working the booths, which are, you know, there's good and bad about that. It is like Ohana. Uh, we have family in there. And, uh, there's uh, kids, you know, and, uh, there's fights. I mean, everything. <laughs> but because there, there's competition, yeah, for products and, and money yeah. and all that. There's a stage and what kind of music should we play? It's too loud. I mean, I've been in some of these beefs too. <laughs> but all in all, it, it's a great place to hang out. Uh, a lot of people come in and they're like, oh, wow, this is so nice. And they get mad. They tell me, how come you guys don't advertise? And I, I tell them, if you knew how much rent we paid for this place, you'd know why. We don't have budget. We <laughs> basically use social media. And we're going to be expanding on that in the near future. Uh, and then now we're going to, to Vegas. And, and uh, you, you know that that's happening. I think you wanted me to talk about that, too. Yeah, yep, yep. So that's coming sooner than later. Uh, so is that going to be called Ohana Marketplace as well? No, that one is actually going to be called Hawaii International Marketplace. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, the There's a huge Hawaii, Hawaii fan, not fan base, but a community there that would love that. And, and, and not just that, but the way we're going to build it, and it, I can't really divulge the location now, but it's, it's in a good spot. And we're going to you know, add things, and, uh, including shows, um, not just music, but hula shows and the, the retail Hawaiian trinkets and things and, and food, but it's going to be in a spot where it's, it's going to guarantee do well. And I'm excited to be a part of that and eventually relocate and be there in Vegas. So that's your, um, that's your master plan is you're going to try and move to Vegas with this whole, this whole um, Oha- Oha- Hawaii marketplace opening up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I think Hawaii international marketplace because when Chris told me about this idea, I said, I got this name because the acronym is HIM, Hawaii International Marketplace. And Chris is a devout Christian. And the first thing people are going to say to someone like him is, Vegas is for sinners. But if you really study the Bible and you, you hear the stories where Jesus went, was he went right in where there were the, the prostitutes and the murderers yep. and the, the thieves. You know? and, and so we're going in there with him first hawaii international marketplace which i already saved the uh, the website him nice. and uh, yeah <laughs> uh, we also will have a strong instagram as well and then taylor's going to be a part of it somehow i know he can come in video and, and do some stuff yep. and maybe play some music maybe you can do a podcast live yeah for sure that'll give us a lot of reason to go to vegas <laughs> Yeah, no, we'll take the promotion and yeah, we'll get you there. We're gonna we yep. plan to have a little studio set up so people can come do broadcast and uh, maybe even play music there, uh, you know, without having to set up just like the, the marketplace. Now we could have a little setup with DJ equipment, a microphone, 
and yep. Mike um, can come up as well. It's funny because when I went there, we had lunch. I had lunch with your son and you're running the show. You're running around on stage, on the mic. You had the football games going. I'm like, this is Tiny's production right now. And you have a booth, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, what I mean, do you sell at your... Chris Ulu is a really good guy. And when he called me to partner up on this, I told him I'd, I'd give him my heart and soul. I mean, I if you see me in there, people think they, they walk in and they go, oh, you got to wait tables or you got to sweep. And I'm like, I don't have to, but I treat it like my house. So when I see someone dragging a chair or a table, and it's making noise. I go up, like, hey, hey, you know, sometimes <laughs> I, I can be, do you guys say like some bad words on this? Or you, you, oh, yeah, you can swear all you want. <laughs> no, like, I'll, I'll be a dick because I'll walk up to people <laughs> and I'll tell them like, hey, you do that at home? And they go, oh, no. And they go, oh, yeah. You know, like at my age, I kind of feel like I earned that right. My wife yep. kind of hits me all the time and tells me, oh, you know, I'm grumpy or whatever. But I feel like if I have a job on this earth, and I always tell her this too, is I feel like I got to teach people lessons. <laughs> and so I'm yeah. not afraid to tell people, hey, you, you know, you might want to try it this way. Or I, I hate a pet peeve of mine is when older people especially say things to you like, hey, wow, you got fat. Or, <laughs> oh, you, your hair got all white. You got old. <laughs> I hear that a lot, you know, from people. And uh, I, before I shaved my head, it was like, oh, your hair white. No, no more hair, all that. And so what I tell people when they tell me things like that is I just tell them, hey, I never see you for so long. And is that the best thing you can come up to tell me? Oh. Go, I just don't, because I, I want to be truthful. I don't want to just accept it like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm fat, old, and ugly. You know, it's like, <laughs> I always tell them, hey, you look good, you know. And, to me, when you get older, that's a process of life, you know? And, yep. and because I saw my mom and dad wither to, to almost nothing, you know? My mom to cancer, my dad with dementia, they get skinny and old, and they don't look good when they die, but they look good to me because that's my parents, yep. right? Exactly. So when, when I see people and they get older, to me, they look good. You're getting older, hey, you're enjoying life, you succeeded, you got this far. You know, so I, I never tell people you look horrible. So that, that's a pet peeve of mine when I hear people say that. Well, that's good because I'm getting there. <laughs> so I'm going to use that if they call me fat or bald or white, white hair. So you yeah, yeah. think of something better to say. <laughs> you look so bad. And then maybe they won't do it to the next person. That's how I feel. I, I can be the, the one that told them that, but they'll think twice next time, you know. That's true. And like you said, with with age, like you had to reinvent yourself multiple times and it seems like you're doing it again. And and with I guess when you become uh, older, you mm -hmm. your knowledge increases. And I remember a saying from a Bon Jovi song. I said, um, are you going to be a wise man? And I and I answer with, I'll tell you if I, if I grow old. And that's how you learn wisdom. So through all your trials and, and swerves throughout the, the years, you gain a lot of knowledge. And to put this whole thing on in Vegas, it's going to need somebody like that that can kind of mentor everybody and kind of show them, okay, this is what worked for me in the past. This hasn't. And to do it in Vegas is going to be crazy. And, and it's good because there's a big local Hawaii community that would mm -hmm. open arm that thing it's it's a great concept, and when are you gonna when are you guys gonna launch that? Well, we're looking now with the location we got. It, it might be if we're lucky by Christmas next year. Oh wow! Uh, and it doesn't make it then. If we're going anywhere in 2022, I'm all good, and I'm in no rush because we still got Ohana Hale Marketplace, and I got my baby and and the family here that you know we're we're still here for a while, and. Okay. My wife and I really don't have a plan of how we're going to do it, but you know, she knows I want to eventually get there and for how, how long, who knows, but uh, you know, again, that that's where we're going to go for this road. And for now I will have to just kind of go back and forth and commute and get miles and yep. then um, eventually make the, the, the big move. So at your booth at Ohana marketplace now, what kind of stuff do you sell there? Uh, mainly, it's PPE products. You're going to see uh, 
you know, I always have my, my mask. And so I sell from disposable masks to the hard shell face shields. This is the big selling product now. It's the uh, bracket and it goes like that. And it keeps you from sucking in your mask. Oh, so you can and breathe. <laughs> women can wear lipstick. Oh. And the whole neat thing about this is I order it from China. It doesn't cost a lot. So I can sell it for a dollar, still make money. And I'm the good guy because everyone else sells it from uh, 3 to $5. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's not much at all. But uh, people buy them by 20 at a time. Uh, I've had people buy hundreds at a time. Uh, for giveaways, for giving to other employees. So I, I, I do good on this. So if anyone needs one of these, if you tell them that you saw this podcast, tell them oh, it was yep. 19 and you'll get a free bracket. Nice. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. People got to remember that. And you still do this. this oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm on uh, dad's above the bridge show number <laughs> i like to call it covid 19. yep <laughs> yeah, are you guys still doing soft serve there no so i wanted to get into this a little bit later into your podcast because i know when the show just started i was going to reward those who stayed and hung on and i'm going to go a little deep here into oh, okay. why tiny tv is no longer on and why i don't do the soft serve because uh, it's all tied in so when I went to the, the Vegas trip, we started this whole idea with the marketplace. This was in, uh, must have been like April or May or something, like maybe June. Just when COVID happened, people weren't traveling at all. The airports were dead. Yeah. Uh, Chris Lou, the owner of the marketplace and myself, we decided to go on this trip. And he already went and came back. And he told the guy at the airport when he came off the plane, there, were, there was a table there, but it wasn't like it is today. And he said, oh, I went for work. And he proved it with a receipt that he did some work and, and some paperwork. And they said, okay, you're good to go. You, you don't have to quarantine. That, well, that was, was it. what and the it, protocol was, right? Correct? Oh, it's it stipulated in the mayor's order. And it's on the old website. And it showed at the time. If, and not only that, not just if you went for business, but if you went uh, as a media, and I went to shoot some video about this marketplace we were going to open, you were exempt. So I had two ways to, to not have to quarantine. And I didn't want to quarantine because I got stuff to do. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> I told Chris, I wasn't going on this trip if I had to quarantine. And so he said, no, guarantee you get the receipt and you show them that you did work. Sure enough, when I came off the plane, I, I went to a table and I told the guy and the, I forgot his name, but I, I kept it because I, I needed it for records. But I, I walked up and I, I, I told him I went for work. Um, I also am part of the media. So the guy at the airport, the state worker, tells me, oh, yeah, 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 tiny TV. I, you're all good to go. You can go to work. And I said, you sure now? I said, give me some paperwork. I, I don't feel right. He goes, no, 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 no. They know who you are. You can go work. No worries. So I went to work and I videotaped and I posted it. A couple of days later, I went to work with taking my baby to work as I normally do. I felt people following me into the marketplace. So I turned around and then there were like five guys there and they arrest me and they cuffed me and everything. I had to call my <laughs> wife to come back and pick up Tory Blue. And I got arrested when they told me to go to work. So I, I was blown away. I thought, oh man, lawsuit. I'm going to sue the state. <laughs> you know, yeah and then then i'm on the news and they're showing me my my mug yeah. shot for days and i'm thinking I oh man, man, i'm recording this i'm talking to my attorney uh, come to, to find out i i i had to lay low and they eventually dropped the charges but i couldn't call my friends back at the news stations to tell this story i'm only doing it here that you're one of the few media that that's getting this outside of what oh, i said nice I um, Why well, I remember when you got arrested and um, people were on social media and yeah. make you try. Me and Taylor were just trying to kind of, <laughs> hey, no, like, bruh, you don't know what he's done for the community. You don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? It's like trying to show support without getting into a fight or having to find these guys. <laughs> and Taylor knows who I am. And, and the old me would have been, 
Brah, you know what? Come, I live here. Come meet me yep, downstairs. Exactly. That's what but we I'm were like trying not to do. And I'm calling Taylor like, bro, these guys are talking shit. We gotta... <laughs> <laughs> but all good. You know, after all said and done, uh, they dropped the charge. I had to make an apology on social media, which you, thank you. I got your, uh, your, yep. uh, your, your uh, message to me on, you text me and, and appreciate what I did. But I also got to mention that the, the charge was dropped. That's as far as I got. I couldn't go to call the stations because I wanted to call DVD and go on KITV and tell my side what happened. I, I thought I deserved that. Uh, yep. But my attorney said, you know what? Just take it. The charges are dropped. Because if I fought this, I wouldn't be able to go into court with a jury till 2022. That means I couldn't travel. They would still press charges against me. And I would never win against the state because if oh, i won yeah. my case it was probably the highest profile i'm not saying i'm a big celebrity but i was one of the the names that they used because trust me once i got arrested a lot of singers had to do concerts or people were going to travel to the mainland they didn't go they said screw <laughs> that. look what happened to tiny right so yep. they used me as that example now if i won that case could you imagine the state would have to let everybody off the hook and pay all these people? And there's no way I would win. And my oh, attorney, yeah. you know, Miles Briner, good attorney, told me, take it, take the deal. And, and so I did. But something I learned out of this, two things. One is, and I knew this before, any advertising, any publicity is good publicity in, in the long run. Because people who know me and my heart will forgive me and know what happened. If they don't, I mean, big deal. Um, yep, exactly. And anyone who forgot about Tiny TV remembered it. <laughs> That's yeah. You know, <laughs> so I got any publicity was good publicity. The second thing I learned was that I don't need this shit in Hawaii. So not that <laughs> I hate Hawaii, but I don't think it's like how it was before. No way. Oh yeah, definitely. So it makes it easier for me to make that jump to my new transition eventually where I'll go to Vegas. It, I, and my wife knows I decided right there when this was happening, I said, you know what? I can't wait to go to Vegas. I just want to get out of here. I cooled off since then. I mean, I'm, I'm back, you know, working and, and, you know, I call this my home, but it's except for Taylor. I mean, my mom and dad are gone and my family has moved around and you can always catch a plane to visit your family. I don't owe Hawaii anything my life and i'd like to move on and and that whole fiasco made it easier for me to transition out uh, the slush puppy thing uh the new soft serve they were my sponsor for tiny tv new soft serve the ube uh, non-dairy soft serve was slush puppy so when tiny tv got taken off they asked me to pull back and not go on while i was getting this hearing and everything resolved and so I, I agreed. I pulled back because I don't want people saying, you know, hey, that's the guy on TV anymore or blaming Spectrum. Uh, well, they wanted me to come back in November when everything was solved. Oh, I see. And But they said Spectrum wants you to make all these improvements to your show at the same time. That made me realize I wasn't going back because during that three or four months I was off the air, I realized I didn't need tiny TV. I did my 20 years. Like I said, I was happy. I, I wanted to do something else and I didn't want to do the changes for my show. It was time to move on. And well, that's, with that, that's good timing. Oh, it was perfect. Uh, you know, other things that happened, I got my insurance money back for half the year that I had to have for my show to be on, on state TV. Uh, but just a number of things that happened was perfect. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I think for my next move, uh, I needed to do this. Uh, my sponsors, no big deal. I mean, I'm still friends with Slush Puppy, New Soft Serve, but I don't expect them to give me a machine and, and product to serve at the marketplace anymore because there's no show. Uh, and that's why that ended. Uh, oh, still I see. Family. Yeah, always family, but uh, got to evolve, yeah? Well, I do remember that time and, and I do remember the post you put after and 
I was inspired just by that post, like just, and I told you it, it meant a lot to see that from you because it took initiative and it, it you put yourself out there and, and I, I don't know. I, for some reason that post, when you showed that video and explained everything and apologized and that I just was taken and I, I had to text you. I was like, tiny, that was such a, such an awesome thing you did. And that's something that I always remember. And, and it was, I know it wasn't easy and I know like behind the scenes, it was a, it was a little bit of drama and, um, Nobody wants to be on the news getting arrested and <laughs> they should have your mug picture on like hungry Hawaiian and I'm just like shit that's tiny. <laughs> but I'm glad that's behind you and everything worked out and I kind of thought they were just kind of like you said using you as an example and they had to show like oh we're not budging for anybody and it, it just was bad timing but to hear your story now, how it kind of transitions into what you're doing now. I guess it was a blessing that all that stuff happened. Ooh, everything happens for a reason, yeah? Yep. I truly it's believe crazy. It. So what I, I know what I wanted to tell you, and this I didn't really know until I like got close with Taylor. Like your real name is Tiny, correct? <laughs> and my middle name is Nitro. Yes. Yep. So it's TNT, Tiny Nitro Tadani. <laughs> You know what's funny is I, I got this tattoo. I'll show you. It doesn't even look like a bomb anymore, but this is before taps got popular. <laughs> a bomb, like the kind you see in the cartoon. And you oh. can't even see the T in there anymore. But uh, <laughs> Taylor did his leg and got all the tribal nice stuff. I'm sure you yeah, got yeah. it too. Here's the other one yeah. I got. This is done oh. by Glenn Lee, the oceanic artist at the time. Those are the sticks for the bomb. Yeah, and we need to we need to get one of our artists to hook it up for you and get it all nice. <laughs> I'm gonna die with these, man. I'm all <laughs> that's super cool. <laughs> Keep it simple. That's that's my whole philosophy, man. It's like simple is always the best. Yep, that's what I learned in martial arts was always kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> no frustrations. Mm -hmm. So you brought it up a few times and. What impressed me over the years is your parenting with Taylor, but now you have a brand new little baby and I can't even talk about like her smile just is radiates happiness and you post her and it's crazy because she looks like the most happiest little girl I ever seen. <laughs> so how's being a, a dad again? <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, it's better when you're older. You'll, you'll see, because I'm sure you'll have more, I think. Oh, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> okay, she's still up. Because we do oh, record yeah. this at a nighttime, I'm not sure how up and how smiley she'll be. But <laughs> she's the best part of my life now. Come, Tori Blue. Come, Daddy. Come, come, come. Yeah. <laughs> this is her. What is this character called? The Dr. Seuss one? Oh, thing? oh the who? Cindy yeah. Lou who? who? Thing one and thing two. Oh, that's what it is. Hi, Tori. Hi, Uncle. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, she got a smile. Yay. <laughs> this is her favorite thing, her cell phone. Oh, yeah. So she got to do her business. <laughs> She's, she likes to watch my videos. That's why I like it. She watches the tiny TV stuff. and. Oh, nice. <laughs> between me and Blue's Clues. Right now, I'm winning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, th this was a surprise. The doctor told my wife and I, we had almost zero chance of having a baby. I was 46 at the time. My wife, I, mean, I was 56. She was 46. And he, he said, your chances of having a baby is the same as winning mega bucks, which oh, is so slim. You won the mega bucks then. <laughs> when we got pregnant. My wife was sleeping one night and I thought of the name Jackie Blue. Because we hit the jackpot. So I said, oh. and I, I don't know if you know the song Jackie Blue. It's back from the 70s, but it was remade by the Smashing Pumpkins okay. later in the 90s. Ooh, 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 Jackie Blue. It's like that. Oh, okay, okay. And she uh my wife told me she didn't like the name Jackie. So I went with Tori Blue because she I likes Tori Birch. 
<laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> they all do. <laughs> we agreed on a T. And then her middle name is Aiko for my mom, Tori Blue Aiko. Okay. And Pagani. So it's not TNT, but almost. Yeah, yeah. Now she's now so, she's watching herself. <laughs> Another thing she likes to watch it, Tori. <laughs> so how's it being a dad again? It's like kind of you're starting all over, but now you know a lot more. So that like it, it's kind of kind of easier, I would assume. Well, plus I'm with my wife, who's a mother of eight now, so she knows how to do it. And she knows, you know, for me, things that, I mean, I, I don't even know how she <laughs> does some of the stuff, like even putting on some of her clothes or, <laughs> and, and there's some things I, I remember and I know well, but it helps to have a, a, a mom like her and then all the siblings. So we got a bunch of mommy and daddies watching her all the time, not just at the marketplace with all the aunties and uncles, but just the kids alone. Oh, that's and awesome. Then, they all take good care of her. Yeah. <laughs> she calls Tato. Uh, Tato. <laughs> Tato, yeah? That's Tato's friend. Can you say Thaddeus? <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Thad. Uncle Thad. <laughs> yeah, I was fortunate to be able to see her in person at, at Ohana Marketplace. Because uh, I always see her videos and stuff. And I was like, oh, I got to see her before she gets too big. I want to see her when she's small yet. <laughs> She's uh, by the time your podcast airs, she'll be 22 months old. All right. <laughs> so, your wife, your wife, um, you said she teaches yoga, correct? No, uh, Zumba. Zumba, that's what it is. Big difference. What's, what's the difference? <laughs> yoga is like this, and Zumba is like this. Oh, okay. So, it's like kind of like um, Jazzercise, a newer version. My wife is gonna slap you. Oh no! Good thing we're good thing we're not like in the same room. Then. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, with Latin dancing to exercising together. Oh, okay. And, you know, group exercise. It, it's fun. I mean, I I watched the, her Zoom cast when she does it. We call it Zoom Ba, like Z U. How do I spell it? Z O O M because it's on Zoom. And ba, because ba humbug, because no one likes to exercise, right? B A H. But uh, we, we change it to Zumba with Chas over there, and then she does her class. So you're welcome to join that. I know you like so, to. So, so if I were to, to join, how would, I, how would I join the Zumba class? Just message me. People can message me or her, and then we just send a link, like how you sent me the link for oh, this. Okay. And then we click it and you dance. And she teaches the class. Yeah, and you don't have to do the exact moves. You just copy or make up your own. Just move around and sweat. So my question for you is, can she see me doing it? Yeah, and you have the choice to not if you don't want oh, okay. to Okay. Yeah, stay, that, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to kind of not have my video camera on. <laughs> Can't have anybody. Because uh, what's your reason, huh? Oh. She doesn't like creepers just staring, like, you know, watching. Oh, the yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound like you, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when you, so you have all these children that you used to coach baseball. Are you, are you coaching anything or are you planning to? No, you know, again, I, I had that run and I think coaching should be done by young people, youngins, because when I coached, I was right out of high school and I'm not bragging, but everyone wanted to be on my team because I had my friend, Jason Baranobis. He was same year as me. Uh, we were young and we just did things differently. Like the kind of the hip way, you know, even our infield practice, we did everything kind of cool. Uh, we, we, I mean, we were strict. I'm the strict, most strict guy and parent you will ever find. People think I'm just fun loving and, and happy all the time, but Although my wife is the disciplinarian for Tory Blue, but I can be very <laughs> strict. And uh, when it comes to coaching, more so. Uh, but it's kind of I was just watching Everybody Loves Raymond tonight, and the father was saying they gotta hate you to respect you, and that's true. <laughs> in the same breath, you still have to be able to be loved and liked, you know, in in the heart of hearts when it comes to parenting and coaching. 
But with uh, baseball, I, I made as fun as we were, I made all my players first day of practice do a little test and they had to know several things. And one was the infield fly rule. They had to recite that until they could all do it. They couldn't swing the bat yet. And then, <laughs> oh, come on, coach. I'm like, no. And, and the, the thing is, my dad made my brother and myself read the rule book to coach. He goes, you want to coach baseball? That's fine. But you got to know the rules. And that was the best thing for us. Uh, the infield fly rule. Runners okay, what is, what is it? <laughs> and imagine this, because it, it makes sense once you, once you learn it. With runners on first and second, or first, second, and third, with less than two outs, any ball hit that can be caught in ordinary effort in fair territory is an automatic out. Okay. And the reason why that was made was a slick infielder would know runners on first and second or first, second, and third. If I'm a shortstop or second baseman and then here comes a lazy pop fly, what am I going to do? Let it hit if the ground. That, yeah. If that rule was not in effect, I would let it drop and I would throw it to third, second, and first and do a triple play. Yep. <laughs> because no one, want, they're going to tag up. They don't want to leave their base. Yeah. So this makes it where automatic out, no one can screw with this and play a trick play on anybody. I may have bored a lot of people on your podcast now, but that's <laughs> why the infield fly rule was in play. But you you were heavy into sports, and I used to notice you on um, OC16, the high school. You were on the sidelines, T-shirts, giveaways. You, you had that car. You had to have the key for the car. <laughs> so you you were a lot involved with the local sports community and and sports was always your passion correct yeah that, and that started with my dad he was the scorekeeper at the blazedale arena for years even for your kickboxing you know he was yep, there yep. anything at the blazedale he was a scorekeeper and i wanted to see the globe trotters and i was maybe seven eight years old and at dinner i said oh dad i want to go see the globe trotters and i thought he's gonna say yeah because he's the scorekeeper but he said, oh, okay, but you got to sign up for T-ball, which was <laughs> Little League back then. They put the ball on a T, you know. Um, and I said, oh, okay. And I was a mama's boy. I wasn't going to play ball like my brother because I was like just going to stay home and watch TV with my mom. <laughs> but I, I went to the Globe Trotters. I had to play. And thank God because, you know, it gave me something to do. Uh, but my dad also made me learn how to dribble left-handed and shoot left-handed. Uh, because you can't just be a one-sided, you know, one-armed basketball player. And and proven with like Isaiah Thomas, now you see all the good guards. They're both ways. If you can't, you won't make it. Yeah. Oh, she's going down. <laughs> she's sleeping. <laughs> uh, that's the best thing, yeah. When you have your baby and they feel safe enough to yeah. To sleep with you. I used to have I used to have Aria. She would never sleep, and I. I have to carry her and walk around the neighborhood. I'll do one lap and she'd be out. And I was like, that's the only way she would sleep. Oh. And, or I would, I would have to have her in my lap and I would play a, the Guns N' Roses song, Patience. It's kind of a slow song. By the end of that song, she'd be out. <laughs> but you know we've been going... My, my CDs, I had Shana Oao sing Patience. Oh, Really? Yeah, and it's slow all the way with slack key. You should, I'll yep. give you that copy so you can listen oh, to yeah, it. Oh, yeah, I definitely want to hear that version. Yep. <laughs> well, we've been Where's going for a there? while. Yeah, she's out. Um, maybe we should have the... Neighborhood. You know, you said you walked around the neighborhood. Yeah. You ever watch Mr. Rogers? Yes, I used to when I was little, yeah. So she likes to... There's an updated version by John Cicada. He's, a, I think, a, a Latino singer. But, you know, on the top 40 and it's a little more upbeat, but she likes that song. So whenever she knows it's nap time or bedtime and I go, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Oh. And I go like that. She goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> she knows it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been going for over an hour. Um, maybe, John, you can ask us the question of the week. Okay. Um, before the question of the week, I got my own Tiny to Donnie story. Yeah. Uh -oh. 
<laughs> on, on November 29th, 2002, I met you. It's really weird. How do you remember the date? <laughs> oh. Um, my friends were playing a show at Pipeline, or not Pipeline, at World Cafe. And you were outside for some strange reason with another person, I think shooting something or whatnot. You yeah. walked by, and I, I was going to the show to record my friends playing, you know, playing the show. And um, I guess I was just, you know, putting my tape in and whatnot. And you walked by and you said, hey, nice camera. So I, I was using a Sony PD-150 at the time. And I was like, oh, yeah. Ty knows what's up. He knows, <laughs> he knows what's up. I was like, yeah, yeah that, was, that was my tiny moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's and awesome. You the same here, dude, John. Yep. Pull ahead, crew. Pull ahead. <laughs> okay, so question of the week is, what are your top three – sports moments that you've experienced either live in person or on television oh okay okay i'll, I'll go first okay. so my top three sports moments um for me i'm gonna age myself but one of the biggest moments i as a fan and i watched as it happened on tv was back in the 80s I was a huge Mets fan, huge. Dwight Gooden, Daryl Strawberry, they're like my heroes. Uh, Sid Fernandez, Gary Carter, Lenny Dykstra, all those guys. Game six of the World Series, I think it was 86. I don't know if you remember. They were down. And it was the, they were down in the series and they were down in the, I, forget, I think it was the last inning. And all... All the it was the Red Sox, Roger Clements. There it was like a huge rivalry, and I was such a huge Met fan. And and they're gonna lose. They're gonna lose the whole series. They had two outs. They had a runner on second or first or whatever it was. And all they needed to do was get one more out, and the Mets were done. Red Sox win the World Series. And Bill Buckley was the first base, right? Yep, Mookie Wilson hits the lamest grounder to the first baseman. All he got to do is field it, touch the base, game over, World Series done. He met, he missed it. Went through his legs, the runners advance, Mets end up hitting another one. They win the, win the game, win the whole World Series the next following game. Like that, I remember that moment. I was like almost in tears because it was like my heroes and like... So that was one of my first memories of a sports moment that got me really like in my feels. Two, it would probably be um, 49ers winning the Super Bowl in 93, 93. And I was always a huge 49er fan. So Who was the seeing that Montana or Young? Steve Young, Steve Young. So I seen when Montana beat um, the Dolphins and the Bengals, it was just, the 93 one, I follow religiously throughout that, that season. And when they won that whole thing, it was, it was a super special moment for me. And I think the third one would probably be I seen live on TV watching Mike Tyson knock out Spinks. That was, that was a huge one for me because it was built up and we'd be at school arguing who was going to win. And I was a big Mike Tyson fan. And when he put him down in the first round, it was like, it was super cool for me. So I, I would say that. <laughs> those are my three fan moments. Yeah. You're a failure, so you got to have one of those in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, what's three? your three? Okay, I'll go in order uh, from three to one. My, my third event on TV that I've seen was, um, well, this one was live. This wasn't even oh, okay. on TV. Uh, Back in the 70s, maybe 72, 73, uh, my family would either go to L.A. because my mom was from there or we'd go to Turtle Bay, which back then was called the Quilima Hotel. Yeah. We would yeah. alternate <laughs> years for when my dad had vacation and during the summer we'd go either to Quilima or to L.A. to go Disneyland and, and visit the family. That one year we went and I was the biggest Johnny Bench fan. Taylor knows I am because I wore number five growing up because he was my favorite player, catcher for the Cincinnati Reds. Nice. And my dad took me to a Dodger game when they played Cincinnati. And I got to see Johnny Bench play. I remember he had a double 
and uh, they won and it was wasn't the greatest thing like, like the the Mets game or anything but it was because my dad took me and I got to see Johnny Bench and it, it'll be one of my favorite moments so my first pro game that I ever went to see that's awesome number two would be and and this is maybe I'm getting hit by just what happened in the news recently but Hank Aaron I, I watched him hit his 714th home run oh. which tied Babe Ruth and it was a big one and I, I remember Al Downing was pitching for the Dodgers a lefty and through the pitch hammering Hank hit it in Atlanta went over the fence and I, I just remember watching every home run, run that year looking at the newspapers back then we didn't have ESPN so yeah. we'd look at the newspaper the box scores and I would check how many hits and home runs they had and when I watched that one on the news they they actually cut out of whatever show to go show it every at bat oh and, uh, that's cool yeah and I, I saw that and that I remember the number one sports thing that I, I've seen on TV isn't a game and I want you to watch this if you haven't seen it, Dad. This one will make you cry, man. Uh, Jim Valvano is a basketball coach for North Carolina State. They won the okay. national championship one year. Uh, he got diagnosed with cancer. And ESPN on the ESPYs had him as the guest speaker and gave him an award. And he came up. Or I don't know if it was an award or he just came to speak. But he gave that never give up speech. Did you ever see that? I think I did. Yeah. I watch it every year. Every year they have the SPs, they repeat it. And I made my wife watch it. I mean, any of my friends, I make them watch it. And it's just so inspiring. If I had a big game and I was a coach for the World Series or the NFL Championship, whatever it is, I would make my team watch it because it goes oh. beyond the field. I and definitely got to see that. that speech was when. He's talking like right now. I know John's monitoring our, our podcast right now saying you guys got to end it because we're going over an hour. No, no, no. We had no time limit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's what they did to Balvano as he was giving his speech. He was talking for like, you know, seven, eight minutes already. And I guess some guy was waving him down, holding a card like two minutes, one minute. Or you gotta, oh. you know. So in the middle of his speech, he says, and to the guy in the back holding up the signs, he goes, I'm dying of cancer. You think I'm going to stop right now? <laughs> Reaction nice. Speaker. I that definitely got to watch that. So inspiring to watch the whole speech. And then if you ever are going to die one day and, and you, you're going to know about it, I mean, that's the way to do it, man. I mean, he, he laid a foundation out that raises millions every year for cancer research. And if you don't know anyone who's died of cancer, then, you know, I, I, I introduced me to that person because everyone knows somebody. Yep. Yeah. Well, but, I'm like, I work for a cancer research center. That's my job. <laughs> yep. Right. There's always That's the cancer it. stocks or the fuck yep. cancer things like yep. that. And I'm looking for that because it's horrible. Yep. And uh, that, that gives you inspiration. And that SB award now, they give out that, uh, Galvano Award every year to somebody. Uh, Arthur Ashe got it one year. Uh, who was the guy? Uh, I can't remember his name, but he wore the fancy ties, colorful ties. He died of cancer. Uh, oh, um, recently. His speech Bobby was... Craig Sager. Craig Sager? Craig Sager. Craig Sager. Good, good call, John. And then there was another guy recently, uh, black gentleman and that's who I'm thinking of. Yeah. He he died of cancer. Oh, Sometimes his he, recent. Oh, well, yeah. oh. See, That's going to stump me. They're going to be chiming in, calling he, you later. He, he, he gave that speech about like fighting cancer and this was sometimes too. you don't have a... Yeah, that, that speech was amazing. Oh, it's going to bother me now. <laughs> we can look it up later. But, and then there was another a woman who's one of the hosts of Good Morning America now, she actually beat it and got into remission and she's still hosting the TV shows and, and stuff now. But uh, yeah, a number of winners of that that award on the SP. So 
of Stuart Netflix. Scott. Stuart Scott. Yeah. I don't know how we forgot that one. <laughs> He's such a cool guy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That, my top three. That's the, that was cool. That's 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 a cool top three. <laughs> well, like, tiny. Not one of me playing at Color Hill. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> he, I was on the spect or OC sixteen, and I was there at the game at Kailua. And Larry Price is talking about old oh, Taylor Tadani and, and a katouche by him. And, and he's for his size, he's the TNT. And then they show me in the stands watching. And then here comes <laughs> someone to interview me. I forgot if it was Jimmy the Geek or somebody. And, and they, they, they're they going to ask me about Taylor. On the, the play before they come to me, the wide receiver jukes him out and he gets chasing the guy down like 80 yards. He gets thrown <laughs> by <laughs> he never told me that story. <laughs> I think it was something where I don't know. It looked like the quarterback was going to get sacked, so he was going in, and then the wide receiver went out. But uh, it was kind of classic. <laughs> so he got burnt right before they were going to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he left that story out. He never told me that one. <laughs> I I went into that played in that. Pro, uh, semi-pro football league or uh, yes we went and they always say that you know he was for his size he was like like dynamite you know like he he's was a killer yep. yeah yeah i was happy my daughter got to see him play he at that and what was for me that was cool when he did do that semi-pro and i talked to him about it and he mm. said he never got to play in the stadium for high school and he got to play for that semi-pro and I told him, bro, like you, you're, I don't know, there's no guarantee you're ever going to do this ever again. So take in every single moment. Like the last time I got to fight or compete, I remember, I was like, I don't know when I'm going to do this ever again. So I'm going to take in every moment. Look at all the lights, look at the surroundings, take it all in because you never know if you're going to ever play again because like, it's just not normal for people people to be playing football at that like there's no high school anymore so he was in the stadium and he's like he always was grateful that I told him that because he took it all in and I mean he got to play in the stadium he got to I mean he you're right he's crazy like for his size <laughs> he he's pretty nuts and I guess that's how I was too in in high school but like Taylor just played like he was <laughs> seven foot linebacker <laughs> today yeah, he cannot walk in. His back's all hurt now. Like, <laughs> he called me the other day and said, we were playing spike ball at the beach. And they text me the next day, I can't move. I'm all hurt from playing spike ball. I was like, see, when he like be like Ronnie Lott in high school. <laughs> oh, man. You remember Ronnie but, Lott? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, Roger yeah. Craig, Montana. That, yeah, that's my gen. Yep. No, yep. but I like the 49ers. It was uh, see they're my favorite team way long ago too. I I uh, followed John Brody as a quarterback. Gene oh, Washington wow. was a wide receiver, number eighteen. So my brother used to be Brody. I would be Washington throwing balls in the backyard. You know, uh, <laughs> Ted Bullock was the tight end. Forrest Blue was the center, all pro. Uh, Vic Washington, the running back. See, oh wow, that's some oh. old school. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I should have said one of my other memories would have been the catch. I do remember watching that live. Yep. That was, oh, yeah, yeah. that was That's pretty inspiring. Clark, he passed away too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. ALS. Yep. Mm. Oh, here's, here's a moment. Uh, I remember to do at sports is, uh, I got pulled over by a cop once and he was walking up to my car and, you know, I've been pulled over more than once in my life. So I'm going, okay. <laughs> and the guy walks up to me and, uh, it was a black gentleman and he starts laughing and he's like, he's like, tiny Tadani. He goes, Oh my God. He goes, just, just go. And I went, what? He goes, you don't remember, but you were at the Pro Bowl event down at the couple a, uh, some stadium thing they were doing out there for, you know, they use the other fields. I think at one of the hotels and uh, his kid was trying to get an autograph after practice from Emmett Smith. So he held the ball up and everyone kept putting their ball over him and Emmett would never see him. 
and I went in the I grabbed his ball, and I gave it to Emmett Smith, and Emmett signed it. Oh. And the police officer's son. And he See, told me that. See, that's that random act of aloha. That, that pay, pay it for it. That's an awesome story. <laughs> not, not to bring up a bad subject, but another awesome story was, um, I'm going to sell him out, but Taylor and I were driving home one night, and we got pulled over. <laughs> and he gave him his ID. And he said, you related to Tiny to Donnie? Uh-oh. And Taylor said, like, yeah. <laughs> and the officer let him go. <laughs> I thought he was going to book him and take you both to jail, man. No. <laughs> so, hey, I was like, oh, good thing your dad <laughs> maybe was the same officer. <laughs> Classic. Right on, Tiny. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming on my show. It's, um, it, meant a, it meant a lot to me. And like I said, because of you and you coming into the I Know Care Star, I, I, I got Taylor in my life. And he's he's been my brother for years. And... I, I definitely appreciate you. I, I love seeing his work ethic in you. I love seeing his hustle, his aloha, and how he cares about other people. And, and that all comes from you. And, and it's cool to, to know both of you personally. Um, thank you for coming on my show. It, it means a lot. And watching you throughout all these years as a little kid till now, it, it definitely is kind of a bucket list thing for me. And I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you've done for me and my family. And yeah, you're there for when my daughter is born, came to her first birthday and all that stuff. So I appreciate you, Tiny. And let's see, how can we find you on the web? You're on Instagram, Facebook and all that. We can find you Tiny TV Hawaii on Instagram. Facebook would be Tiny Tadani or? Everything is Tiny TV Hawaii. Remember? Okay. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You can also find Tori Blue on Instagram, Tori <laughs> underscore Blue. Um, your wife. She had her Instagram when she was still an embryo. Oh. <laughs> I wanted her to be the youngest person with an Instagram account. She was still beating in her <laughs> Doesn't get younger than that. Huh? <laughs> so what? Um, uh, Instagram is Chas underscore Tadani, I think. And that's yeah. where they can find her Zumba class. Yeah. All right on. Okay. And for us, atbpod.com on the web, Instagram above the bridge podcast, YouTube above the bridge pod. My personal one is Thaddy Daddy Hi. Follow Boy Band John. I always tell everybody at the end of the show. BBJ8, the letter O8. Follow him on Instagram and um that's about it, man. We did it. That was a cool episode. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> no, no editing now. You got to keep it simple. Keep John, it simple. Keep it simple, man. Let it go. Just dump it. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, like, I told him too before we went on. I say, like, ah, if something you say you want to edit out, just let me know. Like throughout the week, he's like, no, we're gonna run it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> right yeah. on, tiny. Um, that's about it. We're good, right? Yeah, I was going to say, um, I know you, you said, you know, thanks for being on your show and you wanted me all that, but then why you took freaking 19 shows for get me on the show then? <laughs> we, had to, we had to space it out. <laughs> so, so uh, Tiny on uh, Thad's Above the Bridge with Thad and John, over and out. All right, shout out to the Artist Groove Network. Yeah. <laughs>